Welcome to episode 79? Is it 79, Tuttles? 89? Yeah. 79? 79. 79 of the Titan Forge podcast. I'm Dratnos, joined by Tuttles and uh, Trell, who I've unfortunately actually swapped in the... Uh, <laughs> oh, graphic. I'm Tuttles now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How could this happen to me? All right, hang on. This is, this is going to be epic. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there we go so so epic thank you Dranos. yeah I, Great I, opener. I deserve doing this after it happened to, you know happens on the mdi broadcast or whatever they the, the names are there's just so oh, yeah. on, you know last thing you think of um anyways welcome back trell trell welcome back to our show it's uh it's good to have you back how are you feeling thanks i'm like i'm getting there i'm almost back to normal kind of it is, takes uh, time it's very good um, we're glad you're okay. You're, of course, now without an appendix, which is, I guess, good? Is that good, or is that bad? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, one less problem that can go wrong, even though, it's, I mean, it's kind of bad that it went wrong at all, but... Yeah, don't don't lose your appendix in the first place. Maybe just keep it safe. That's yeah. my tip of the week as well. That's good. We'll, we'll cover that more when we get to the tip of the week segment, of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's an important <laughs> tip for sure um, but it, it's effective weight loss surgery though she got lighter that was true i lost 15 pounds for, for for a lot of money i guess i was gonna say for free but that's definitely not free okay kona um, somebody had to pay for it <laughs> and uh wait how, dude how much does the appendix weigh do they give it do you get to keep it Oh, I have no idea. Do you get to keep it? <laughs> I don't know, man. Do they like give it to you in like a like a no. a bag or something? I never, I never saw the stuff that was removed for me. No. Okay. It's not well, like your adenoids or something, man. I just thought it would be a cool souvenir. Um. I mean, you did pay for it. That's true. It's kind of yours. It, it, they sort of stole it from you if you think about it. Um. Anyways. That's a good point. <laughs> but rather than thinking about that, let's talk about some World of Warcraft stuff. This week, we're going to talk a little bit about the MDI. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the dungeon raid tuning changes that have come out recently, which there's actually quite a bit. Um, a lot of it's really good. Some of it's a little, a little, a little more sketch. Uh, and we have a Discord question that we'll do as part of our main topic this week as well, which uh, is basically about if we could make one change to several different categories in the game, what would those changes be? Uh, it's a really cool question, and we'll spend some time talking about that. Uh, in the news front as well, we also have the World First 24 was completed just six hours uh, yes. ago over in China, where it's still uh, Spiteful Volcanic fortified uh, with the, a, a powerhouse team comp here. This one's not actually making use of the five night elf strategy that we saw World First 24 oh, are they, done with. They are they not the five valley. elves? Yeah. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. Um, are they four elves? I am not sure. Let's see. I guess it doesn't say easily on mass over, um, but they are, they, they could be. They've got Maybe. Holy Pally, though, so it, it's it, they lose a lot of time if they are trying to do Night Elf stuff. It was a Necrotic Wake, true. though, which kind of doesn't surprise me, because Necrotic Wake has always felt like one of those dungeons where if everything goes right, it's so good on the timer. Yeah, I, I actually do agree with that. That seems like that's yeah. pretty reasonable. I assume that they probably did some weird shit where they snapped the Necropolis. Maybe, yeah. It's, uh, I don't know if there's any any VODs of it or anything. Um, but that's cool, cool little little piece of news. Of course, we're not going to see any new high keys done this week as it is now <laughs> bolstering necrotic tyrannical which oh yes the trifecta of bad affixes <laughs> um, it's uh it's definitely definitely tough definitely a tough week to be to dude be gaming especially as a i started i started writing my weekly uh wowhead post about the best and worst mythic plus dungeons to do this week and I sat there, and I literally, I don't know how many times I talked about Tyrannical, but it was not many. Basically, everything I covered was like, what the fuck is bolstering a Necrotic in this dungeon? Why is it like this? Also, uh, I mean, Necrotic Tyrannical is also a brutal combo. Like, there's several bosses that are just uh, just going to pound your tank with, the, with that combo. Oh, God, we love Gore Chop on Tyrannical, where your tank doesn't get a reset. Very cool. Yeah, you got to, like, AoE stun those ads and not let them get close at all. Like one auto goes through from them uh, during during Gorchop's cast sequence, and your tank's gonna die. Um, okay, so let's I guess move on a little bit to MDI stuff. In our global bracket this week, we actually had a pretty surprising result, which was 
that Perplexed took down Echo, who were the, I would say, pretty pretty overwhelming favorites going into the weekend. Even though Perplexed won the last cup of the last season, uh, Echo had won the, like, the finals after that, and uh, looking really, really, really strong. But you know, Perplex up, is, yeah. Perplex is actually just like a solid team overall. They, the core of that team has actually been doing MDI consistently together longer than the core of Echo. With uh, Divine, Shine and maybe it's just them two left from the original team that they were on. But Swag, I think, Swag was on a, a version. Swag? Yeah, never mind. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I want to say it's just those two from the Legion team. But as a, as a team, they've gotten better and better every single MDI. And it's always just like, as soon as you see them put up a time in time trials, you're like, that's probably one of the fastest times. Yeah, they they were really close in time trials in a lot of the dungeons. Although Echo did have the upper hand in the time trials. Perplexed really showed up on the uh, on the weekend itself with uh, like very, very, very clean runs consistently, which is impressive because those dungeons, even on plus 18, are uh, are no walk in the park. You know, you, you see the plus 24s or whatever timed on the live keys, but the 18s are really pretty deadly too. Um, so yeah, very, very well done by Perplex. Looking forward to seeing what happens next weekend. I expect that Echo will be uh, really looking to come back with a vengeance. We also had a PI me in third, which was Dr. J's team, and Obey Alliance in fourth, which is formerly known as Ethical, or that Oceanic team. Uh, so a lot of a lot of talent at the top of the top four uh, in the global region. There was uh, a lot of prides being skipped with uh, the yep. five night elf strategy. Most teams ran five night elves in most dungeons, but there were a couple of dungeons where people played holy pallies. Um, generally. They didn't win those dungeons, but they did a couple. Like a couple <laughs> yeah, of, close. Yeah. They, uh, well, Jeeth's, Jeeth's team came really close to taking Halls of Atonement from Echo. Yeah, that was game Holy one Valley of day versus one. Night Elves. It was uh, game one, day one, eight seed versus first seed, and you like thought so. You thought you're, you're used to Echo just like rolling in and, <laughs> and smashing, but uh, yeah. question marks with with Jeeth on the Holy Valley really almost almost took it from them in game one, which is uh, it set the stage for a weekend where like all eight teams were really close together and there were a lot of upsets a lot of times the uh the lower seeded team ended up winning their game so uh, it was definitely pretty cool there was a lot of uh a lot of homogeneity in the specs especially in the tank I department yeah. uh, a lot of vengeance demon hunter we did see some bears yes. we saw a little bit of tank. Uh, one bear, bear. Yeah, one, we have one balance is so good in halls of atonement uh which was pretty good it was a necrotic dungeon uh, and the Thrash Legendary Incarn combo. I've been playing that on my bear on live as well. It's it's uh that was the first build I was like drawn to on bear, and it's so fun. Um, yeah, that that Ursula Fury remembered Legendary actually goes through Necrotic, so you just get massive shields if you're doing huge pulls. So that's why the that's why Brintari's health stayed really high, even though he's getting slammed by like twenty mobs. Yeah, so it let them do like these big AOE pulls, and uh, they did. They did die once on pull, where just like you, that that bear <laughs> phenomenon, where like the first three auto attacks in any given pull probably kill you. But yeah. after they figured out how to survive those first three auto attacks, you know, it was all it was all uphill from there. Do you think Do you think Guardian is like a likely candidate to actually be brought out for Necrotic across the whole entire season, or do you think it's just like a Halls of Atonement special? You know, I thought I thought Guardian would be superior in Necrotic across the board, but seeing like how demon hunter can make it work with like the eight second necrotic immunity for one of the Kyrian trees that you can take. I think that that alone allows demon hunter to just play around necrotic, just like any other tank or just like guardian would. Hey, Dratnus, I also regret to inform you that apparently on our other board, uh, the names are jumbled up on our other board. Oh no. Uh, yeah. On the other, right. yeah. We'll, do, we'll do a swap there as well. <laughs> I actually, I thought that would be the case as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> do I, do we want to this. talk about the do we want to talk about the China Cup? I think that would be interesting to discuss as well a little bit. Yeah, that will give me an opportunity to move our things around as well. So we have the the China Cup actually had a lot of no shows, which uh, I I mean we we haven't been following it too directly, right? We were just uh, but here's the here's the bracket on Raider IO. This is the upper bracket. Let me do this. Uh, this can't. Ooh, that's not what I wanted to move. Let me do the swap now. Is the China Cup being broadcast anywhere? I didn't catch it. Whether it's on it was Dou, yeah, yeah, it it was being broadcast on Dou. I didn't get a chance to watch any of it, so I, I don't I don't know how close or competitive it was, but I, I do know it was being broadcast. Yeah, yeah. So we had what uh, one, two, three, 
four different teams ending up no showing at different points, <laughs> including a team that won a game. Did they? Yeah, this team won a game. And where'd they go? Oh yeah, okay, yeah. So they went here, then they won an actual game, and then they no showed for their next series. And then the next series, yeah, I'm not sure. It seems like uh, so six. There were six different no show series out of the fourteen different series, including the upper finals, which is yes, you know, up up no showing the upper and the lower finals. That is, not, I mean, it's pretty crazy. Good, not a good look for optics, I will admit. One ha like. Okay, so like the, the teams that just no showed round one, that, that that's kind of understandable, right? Like you just, you know, you're, somebody on your team isn't available to make the tournament. But the, there are several teams here that played a game, played a series, and then ended up no showing later. Um, <laughs> this team made it all the way to the grand finals, better us, without playing a single game. <laughs> <laughs> Their upper quarters, upper semis, upper finals were all no shows, and then they actually won 2 0 in the finals. That's wild. Insane yeah, this is a wild played. bracket. Um, yeah. Interesting question, okay, something chat. About the... uh, how many spots does China get at LAN? Two. They get two. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's because this this kind of thing started last MDI. Maybe even the MDI before that. I can't remember if they were doing that then. But like all the Chinese teams seem to band together and just be like, okay, we're all going to put in like half as much effort as we want to so we all have like similar time trial times but they're all pretty slow like if you looked at their time trial times from this last cup the the fastest bolstering hauls was like 22 minutes or something dude it just fucking confuses the shit out of me because last time okay so last time we had a china only region was in legion and they had really good teams like they had the there was a skyline d team and there's a sun sky team and the sun sky team played like this weird ass comp but their times were still like not bad the skyline d team was actually like a world co competitor uh, level team as well but then now we have this shit, and it's just like, uh, how does this happen? How? Yeah, I'm I'm curious to know exactly what know. was causing all these no shows as well. It, it it's I mean it's it is just kind of baffling. Um, and so. you also have like Team D and Battle for Champion, and then like if you look at the Raider IO ladder for uh, right. like live like the, like live the, pushing, the World First Twenty Three, the World First Twenty Four were both done by Chinese teams as well. There's like five of the top twenty teams are Chinese teams. Like they are fucking good at Mythic Plus. What are they doing with the MDI, man? I, maybe it's just a case of like the good pushing teams have no interest in MDI there, because that's kind of true in in the rest, of, like in the Western regions as well, right? Where like there are several teams that play live but don't play MDI, and and vice versa in a couple cases. I mean that's fine, yeah. Um, and yeah, maybe, maybe uh, yeah, I think there's always some of that. I swear, though, I, th I swear all the teams just, like, are in one Discord together, and they're like, all right, everyone, we're just not going to try very hard. And if we get to, like, fourth place, we'll just go, we'll just no-show, and you guys can take I doubt. I doubt there's collusion, Yeah, the but collusion. I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe. I'm, I, I swear it has to be that, but hopefully. It's definitely, everyone. six no-shows is, is hard to explain, like, as a random happenstance, right? Like, that that's a lot of, a lot of no-shows to be going on. I, I don't, I don't really know. Anyways, uh, don't want to dwell too long on that. We could talk a little bit about the... Um, so, much as the tanks were pretty much all Vengeance, I think there was pretty good diversity in the DPS slots. The healers were basically all Disc Priest because uh, of, you know, Rest of Shaman, yep. be Night Elf. Um, there were a couple Holy Paladins Holy actually in Rest of Druid as well. But it, basically, I don't think any of those really won their series. Um, the DPS... Basically, though, healers have to be... Dis yeah. Discipline. As long as PI exists, they have to be disciplined. If as long as the disc priest can heal the damage, then you have to take a disc priest because you just get so much extra damage on your fire mage. Then every group basically had a mage in every dungeon, a fire mage. Um, because again, they're really good at everything. They take the PI really well. <laughs> um, but then we saw Death Knights, Hunters, Druids, uh, Balance Druids, Windwalkers, and Rogues taking up those other slots. And we actually saw much as there wasn't too much spec diversity, even in the tank and healer roles, there was a tremendous amount of covenant diversity. Uh, we saw that two different true. covenants for Vengeance, four true. different covenants for Disc. Uh, we saw, what was it, two different covenants for Hunters, two different covenants for Balanced Druids, uh, maybe two for Rogues as well, and definitely two for Unholy DKs. So there was mm -hmm. actually quite a bit of difference between teams in different dungeons, and I'm curious to see if there ends up being convergence going into the later cups or more divergence in that that'll be an interesting thing to see um definitely the it, it was cool to see these these like mirror matches where there were actually like 
three different covenant choices between the teams and seeing when that mattered. Although often it's just because the covenant choice isn't that impactful, uh, which lets it lets it be a not as big of a choice. I actually thought the knight the knight fey discipline priest pick was really cool. I didn't even think about that until I saw it in the cup. Yeah, because it, it brings you like mana regen and cooldown recovery for whoever you're uh, mm -hmm. helping. So like you you no, can regen no, mana, yeah. you can make the mage get more CDR. It's a. Uh... I mean, notably notably you don't uh, get CDR on like PI and shit though, but right. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't really want it anyway, because, uh, well, I guess if you're giving your mage cooldown reduction, you'd like some as well. So yeah. you don't get it. Um, there were some issues in the MDI. There were a couple of slight hiccups, mostly a missed the Tyrannus Scythe. There was a count issue with uh, the Tyrannan villagers not giving count when there was an observer in the group, which we've seen before. That's uh, Whenever there's like a mob that goes friendly or disappears and, and gives count that way, sometimes when there's an observer in the group, stuff gets weird. Because it like, yeah, gives the count to them or whatever or something instead. Um, yeah, that's because the, the players are in a raid group when they're when they're doing the MDI. They're like, they're actually in a raid group with two mm -hmm. observers in like group eight, so they're not in the frames. And people have to alter their weak auras, and uh, this is kind of a tangent, but like the MDI players have to alter weak auras and their UI to untrack the mage kicks and all that from the observers. It's really interesting how it all works. Yeah, you but actually it definitely causes problems. You, you you should if you're going to do MDI practice, you should try practicing with like somebody outside the raid in a raid group. Um, yeah it does help uh help you get all your stuff set up for it um then there were also maze issues and mists which they ended up fixing after uh the first series but the first series had like two two like a game and then a remake and then that next game had it as well uh, so they ended up like replaying the mist a couple hours later and uh that ended up not being great of course um th again that was an issue with trying like stuff that's tournament realm specific not live not live servers uh, and really goes to show why they do so much testing for live server stuff because there's so much stuff that uh that can go wrong then when it's a little bit less tested on the tournament realm uh it can happen there too with whatever's new uh we also saw the halkius thing you know where oh yeah that yeah, that, that was so <laughs> That was so unlucky too, because they actually lost a series that or lost a match that they would have knocked out PI me, which got the fourth got fourth place. Uh, but <laughs> they got the Halkius. Which, to be fair, it is rotato. there is play. You can play around the Halkius um, thing by like not moving Halkius right before his reflection. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, you can. It is a it is an unfortunate bug for sure. That's that's the bug where I'm sure you guys. I've run into this in my keys as well, where Halkius. Oh, yeah. uh, like the safe zones are dangerous and the danger zones looks are safe um from his from his beam yeah, spinnies. I, th I think it's either a movement right before or if you put him like half on like a slanted ground because there's like uh, a little patch of of like rocks that you can put them on you know the good old rock placements and dungeons that screw everything up you gotta watch <laughs> out for those yo I, I hope we get the one where he like beyblades and fucking yeah. just <laughs> blasts <laughs> 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 Dude, if you, can you can you imagine if you and I are sitting there casting that and then it happens? You and I are just gonna sit there and be like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, I've I've seen that one before as well. Luckily, it was I don't, I don't know if like I'd be able to not one shot, but I don't know if I'd be able to control myself from laughing, just like dying as it happens. The MDI also had a, a new UI, which I thought was pretty pretty sleek. I think they ended up they ended up like uh, the first couple the first day there were a couple of kinks they were working out and it still has a little bit of an issue where it can like cover the boss health, um, but it's now like full screening much more often with like picture in picture rather than that two box. Which uh, for anybody who's ever tried to design like a OBS scene and you're trying to put two rectangles into your scene and not have a bunch of dead space, it's actually a really hard problem to solve. Um, True. Like really, really yeah. hard. Yeah. Fitting two 1920 by 1080 boxes into one 1920 by 1080 box and downsizing the two smaller ones is definitely a problem that is difficult to find. So they're now just like, usually there's just like one full screen with a picture in picture in the corner, um, which I think looks pretty good for the most part. It's just a, a little bit of getting used to. Uh, and mm. Would you change anything about the UI at this point? Um, I th I, yeah, there, there are a couple suggestions I had. Where like the doing the two box, but with you know how they have like health frames and details on the like on the screen, I would take mm -hmm. those out of the part that's shown and move them up into that dead space, and then just have the like in the two box the um 
the the feed be just pure gameplay with no ui or stuff and all the ui elements moved up into that into that dead space in, into like okay as opposed to actually being on the, mm, that's actually interesting yeah, I, I don't know how feasible. I think that might require them to have an extra observer in each each one, though, because it's because of the way that. They I mean, that seems that. that seems reasonable to me, though, to have an extra even an extra observer, because right now they have two observers per. But like, uh, I guess yeah. I guess it would be difficult to have them like, because one thing that we were having issues of is like people they were showing like whenever people died, it was hard to always tell if they released versus got resed and shit because it was like difficult to see if they were in range of the observer versus not and you're like yeah uh, we would happen like when, when you actually you get to talk to the observers doing this the the stuff that they are like they, you know they're working with like a a 20 year old game engine now that was not supposed to be like a, <laughs> you're not it's not supposed to be something that was an observer client so they're just like floating around on their invisible mages and like using a controller to like to turn and stuff and yeah so. and and uh for those who don't know starship who is one of the uh gcd tv people who like has to fucking rig up like a bunch of random stuff as well to make sure that it's all uh feasible and he writes a bunch of scripts and and stuff it's it's really interesting Trell, would you change anything about the ui though yeah yeah i did there was something about the enemy forces count that was weird. I think the first game I watched, it just uh, didn't yeah. even show it until like both teams were at forty percent, yeah, so I couldn't tell. It was like, like slow to update as well, which apparently is just uh, a limitation of the way I, they're I actually right now. Yeah, I actually, actually heard about how what what the deal with that was. Did you actually hear what what the deal with that was, Dretness? No, so I, I didn't catch it. They were pull they were pulling stuff from the combat log. But the uh, combat log doesn't update enemy forces count until after a certain number of events have happened. So they would like hmm. uh, <laughs> say you like. So you like touch of death the mob at the end, right? Uh, that's the end of like that uh, combat tag, and you like burn the mob from like five percent. So you wouldn't update the, you wouldn't be able to update the count until like you get re back in combat later on. Interesting, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So I they, they said, I think they said they were gonna be able to fix that. It. They like, there's no bar anymore, so you kind of just have to like look at the number and and kind of match it up in your brain. Where you, whereas you can't like look at two bars side by side and, and both screens and like see it filling up as they do the poll. As stuff dies, you know, I really enjoyed that about previous MDI UI where someone would do a humongous pull, you'd see all the little mobs die and they go up like 7%. Then you'd see all the big mobs die and they go up like 20% after everything died. Yeah, if there mm -hmm. was a way to incorporate, you know, that that weak aura that everybody uses now for their timer where it actually tracks like how much count is in the pull that you're fighting right now. And then oh, the, re the like reload weak aura. Section, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. And the empty section, that kind of tech uh, would be would definitely be awesome to to get fit in there. But of course, uh, every everything like that comes with its own set of, of huge challenges we don't know about. All right, let's move on to, uh, to tip of the week. My tip of the week goes for tank players on Bullstring Necrotic. Uh, this is a useful strategy. So in your Battle.net client up at the top right, you actually want to go, you can click here, and you can click this Appear Offline button. And this is going to help you avoid having getting spam whispered because as a tank player, uh, all of the other tank players are already doing this this week. And so that means that by being online, you're going to get like 30 whispers for keys. But when you go and you set yourself to appear offline, uh, you can hide. You can hide from people and not get whispered, uh, spam whispered for keys uh, on this tyrannical bolstering necrotic week. So uh, that's my tip. That of is week. so accurate. Yeah. Or, or you can just be like me and be like, nope, I'm not tanking whatsoever. Yeah, <laughs> the the other way to do this is every time somebody whispers you for key, you just say, "Can I bring my alt?" Uh, <laughs> eventually, they learn to stop whispering you. That's uh, a <laughs> can I bring my strategy. 180 vengeance demon hunter? Yeah, yeah. Do vengeance oh, demon hunter even at 180? Feel... Can do it. Uh, okay, Trell, what is what is your tip of the week? Oh, my tip is. If you have any control over your body, don't ever explode your appendix. It's not worth it in the slightest. It costs a lot of money, probably. Well, depending on the country you're in, it costs a lot of money and a lot of your time. So, <laughs> yeah. So avoid doing. It's that. Also very painful. Yeah. What, what What was it that caused you to decide to explode your appendix? What 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 was the thought process that caused? Uh, you he was trying to get out of MDI. He was trying to get out of MDI that okay. bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I logged on my 229 perfectly geared Vengeance Demon Hunter with like 30% versatility. I walked up to three mobs on an 18 and they killed me through my mitigation and then I just exploded my appendix out of rage. All right, well, uh, so yeah, don't, don't do that. That's a good tip. Uh, okay, let's do Clip of the Week, which is from Tettles. 
This is from uh, Lapan's stream. This is the oh, this is the necrotic wake snap. Yes. So uh, basically, what they're doing is they're sending their hunter. You can also do this with a rogue up top in the necropolis and uh, snap some mobs down to the bottom. I actually think that this has not a ton of use for live realm stuff, but it is still decently useful. Um, I, I, I do think actually after the Kyrian armament change with all the weapon stuff, we're going to talk about them a little bit, but maybe less useful, but uh, it's really nice to get this stuff stacked up. If you're electing to use like the javelin or the orb on it, uh, just getting these mobs a lot tighter. The downside is that you have to commit like a death. So you're losing five seconds there. Uh, but the upside is that the mobs are stacked pretty tight and it gives you more room to be able to kite out like the stitch works and uh, the other mobs as well. And I don't know. I, I, I do think that there's definitely some use for it in live realms. Maybe not the most useful thing ever, but pretty reasonable, I would say. Yeah, they, they kind of got totally it snapping going into this expansion, right? Like you can see, uh, not only did it take a little while after the death for the, the mobs to snap, but you can see they're, they're coming down piecemeal. They're evading for several seconds before they uh, are actually attackable here. So there's a good chance that some random person in your group might get autoed. Uh, and your tank is, is having a really hard time building threat on all of these things at once. Um, still worthwhile in this particular instance, but I think this is basically the only spot that you can snap profitably. Um, is there any other snaps that you even know? I don't really there's know. There's the spires snaps. mobs that snap every time you yeah, pull them the because, they, ones. Uh, because they're bugs. Oh, snap the across the the, the the ether divers landing too. The, uh, yeah, the things yeah. up on the left after the first boss. Yeah, two of those of those three are just d just will not cooperate and always snap at you. Um, which yeah, for, I mean, it's, for those that. But yeah. don't know how snapping has changed in BFA. Whenever you tricked or misdirected or, or just pulled mobs in a snap spot, they would just instantly port to the tank or whoever has aggro, and they would melee right away. And that has a, they had a chance of going anywhere in like a 360 degree around the player that they were going to. So they would just hit the tank in the back a lot of times. So you had to have like extra mitigation or shields up. But now they change it so that they they'll snap if they have no path available still in the same like 360 degree random location around the player but they just evade for like five seconds before they do anything so, so you're able actually, to actually yeah you can actually position them better as a tank these days so that you don't ever get hit in the back but you have to like time your aoe threat really well like right as they become unevaded they like they they evade before and after snapping they will kill people who aren't their current threat target if they have path to them but not to their threat target as well um so they, they're, there's a lot of ways that it's nerfed. You have to back off. Yeah, that's what, yeah. Is what he's saying. So you got to yeah. get the hell away from them. No, I mean, like, the, the reason that the hunter has to die rather than can just feign and, like, jump back down and disengage or whatever is because the hunter actually, like, even if they've misdirected and shot everything, those mobs are still going to go and auto the hunter, which they wouldn't have done in BFA, right? In BFA, if you misdirect and then shoot yeah, something, that is, it's, not, yeah, it's yeah, never going to yeah, hit yeah. you. It's going to snap at your tank or, or run at your tank. Um, yeah, that's true. But yeah, they have to die anyway, though, just yeah. to get down from the necropolis. That's true. It, it actually does sort of help. Um, you you can come you can come out of the necropolis just by ju jumping off like the little. There's there's a way to come out, but it's not it's not reasonable either. Right. Um, right. Well, okay, yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's it, just uh, to die. It is you know if if a Taldazar was playable again with these same affixes, um, it's possible you would do some kind of snap. I don't know. Maybe maybe you you could still do the snap onto Razan because I bet he would teleport you down to him instantly again. Maybe I I don't know. It's just weird. It's uh it, it is a I think a very effective nerfing across the board of snaps this expansion, but uh, in this one spot because of the weird way that you know you teleport to an entirely new building, uh, it sort of still works. Uh, but again, when we talk about the changes, which I guess we can talk about right now, dungeon and raid tuning. Uh, Woohoo! Dratos is back raiding again. Oh yeah, the the Pop Tart Corn Dog raid. We're back once again. Actually, going to pull all the bosses uh, because of, well, we'll get to that later. Let's start. Let's start at the top. We'll just go through this <laughs> list in a nice straight line. Uh, Dungeons and Raids: Manifestation of Pride, Prideful Affix, now sees through stealth and invisibility effects. <laughs> great, Ooh. great change. Um, all that does is make people's lives harder on live keys. And that was not the intention of the change. They were trying to fix meld skips, but that doesn't affect meld skips at all because. When you shadow meld skip, you're out of range of his aggro range anyway, so it doesn't matter if you see stealth. Yes, this uh, this is a change that doesn't do anything, um, and that is true. It does seem like it is aimed at the MDI uh, meld skips, but it does not affect them. I mean, basically, the way that they would have to do anything is like they would have to change how shadow melding would work with like true sight mobs or whatever, uh, because right now you can the the way that you can meld off true sight mobs is like you either can 
uh, line of sight them like around a corner. You can just all pop meld and, you, and then, like the true sight mobs have no path to you, so they don't, they don't see through it and then they'll just like reset. Or you can just be like outside of their pull radius, which is like 25 yards of true sight. It's like 20 yards, something like that. Um, and if you're f- far enough away, the mob just resets. So, but the MDI guys were already getting out of range of the AOE from the pride, which is like 60 yards. So they were already like really far. So th- this is no change or no difference now. Yeah, we also have um, some changes here. <laughs> what is Tuttle's <laughs> Tuttle's. <laughs> He's opening a jar. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got, I got re- requisite to, to open up a jar, whatever. <laughs> um, we also have Plague Fall. Nerfs to the last boss. I think this is, uh, I guess, a, a welcome boss to nerf. I think it was one of the harder ones. I'm not sure... So uh, I'm not sure if you guys have done Plaguefall yet this week, how much less often she's going to cast Infectious Rain in the last phase, or how much slower the Plague Crash tendies are. Um, the adds being less health and damage in that boss fight, that's probably welcome as well. They were getting pretty uh, pretty one-shotty. Yeah, I think yeah. that fight definitely deserved the nerfs. Uh, I think they hit some good bosses in these, these tuning passes. Yeah, so Sanguine Depths, uh, the adds that didn't give count sometimes, the flying ones, which you rarely pulled on purpose anyways, now give count. Um... First boss nerf, good nerf for the first boss I think here, which is the the smashy the AOE smash he does, and then the AOE damage of soaking the orbs that that smash does have all been reduced by twenty percent. Um, I, I somehow think the soaking point. is I think the soaking is not enough though. Like so twenty twenty percent like you were only able to soak one or two of those orbs at once, and I feel like this boss should feel more like Ophiron and less like Mana Devourer, where it's like. If it, you, like you, you, first off, you can't soak too many of them at, like at once, otherwise you just die. And secondly, it's just like the amount, the way that you have to do the fight is you have to get out of range so far to drop the orbs because they move so quickly at the boss. Like there could have been a different change as well, where they made the travel time of the orbs about twice as long, and I think that would have a, a, about covered the same thing. But the the charge would have overlapped poorly if they made it move yeah. twice. With all of these changes know, as well, like. Something like a health and damage change, something like tagging a mob with true sight, those changes are like easy. Adjusting like fundamentally how a mechanic works by like changing the the pathing of or the the speed of mobs. I guess speed might be a, a something that they could uh, adjust pretty quickly, pretty easily as well. But like the, the a lot of people suggest a yeah, lot true. of fixes to prideful melding. Like they they suggest adding the awakened stuff where it spawns at the last boss if you haven't killed it. Uh, anything like that, you know, we're talking about a serious investment of of code right compared to just ticking a box on on true sight uh, or compared to just adjusting a number well, by 20 percent uh, although this might be just one of those easy changes as well rumor has it that uh right now prizes just aren't spawning oh oh yeah so i saw a screenshot yesterday of two prides that were like attempting to spawn but they're inactive in the arden wield area of the other side oh, i've heard of the arden wield area being buggy yeah i've heard <laughs> i've heard of that as well so maybe that's just a, a buggy area for prides now uh, I don't know what, what would cause that. Yeah, that's probably just a bug for a few days, but it's pretty funny. Second boss of Sanguine Depths, uh, health reduction on the Fleeting Manifestation. To me, this seems like a great boss to nerf, but the nerf that they've chosen is a little bit of a, a question mark for me, because I think that the tough overlaps come at the start of that thing's health, not the end anyway, so, usually, right? So the tough overlaps happened on the second and the fifth ad um, that end up spawning. That's com- that comes with the second castigation. Um, and I was actually talking about this a little bit yesterday. I thought that it wasn't enough of a nerf on this guy, and I thought the castigation was the problem. But uh, as my chat pointed out, like that's you're reducing a lot of damage that is across the whole entire group just by uh, reducing that thing's health, and you have to pump less damage into it, so the boss is effectively a lot faster too. So that it is like a, it's a pretty decent nerf. And it ends up saving you a lot of pulsing AOE damage across it. It do- it doesn't. I don't know. You're still going to be rough if you get targeted with castigation while the ad is up. But maybe the overlaps are going to be better now. I, I think that that one is like a, a let's see how this one really works out in practice. Yeah, I mean, th- there's no way to know until next week, of course, because uh, because you can, you know, I'm not I'm not going in there. <laughs> I'm not going in there. I'm not, I, yo, I I got a 21 save with depths. Do you guys want to run that? Oh, I'm busy that day. Sorry. Oh uh, yeah. Um, Sorry, I gotta go to the hospital. <laughs> my, my other appendix. <laughs> my other appendix. Oh, um, this fires of ascension. We've got the three Valkyr carrying things at the end. They don't trigger on death affixes anymore, which is good because if those things 
were to bolster after they died, like by the time the bolstering would trigger because they, their death is a couple seconds after, it's the same time that everything else gets full healed. So you would actually have to like full heal and, and deal with the bolstering. That would be rough. <laughs> Um, so That'd be really funny. Glad to see that's gone. And they also halved the damage taken increase of oppression, which, again, I think this is a good thing to nerf. Uh, I still am. I still believe that this is going to be one of the hardest moments in Spires. Is the last three? Um, these guys. I mean, it's basically three Shadow of Zul. So the, <laughs> the the oppression change is is actually a really good change because it also kind of nerfs the Klotos AOE pulsing damage. Mm -hmm. I think that I think that if I actually had to nerf this, I don't know if I would have nerfed the oppression stacking. I, I think I probably would have nerfed the Klotos damage done because the damage done from that pulsing AOE is like so oppressive in my mind that uh, you don't know that you're making an active like an actively wrong decision whenever you start to pull the mini bosses in like any order. But if you do anything except for Clotus, then you are actively just wiping. That's true. Yeah, I think nerfing the Clotus effect to make it so that the doing them in like I mean, it's, there's always going to be a right order to do them in, but making it so that, like if you're just in a, a pug and you accidentally kill Clotus first, and then you're looking at Clotus buffed the other <laughs> two, like what what are you gonna do? There's the, your, your your keystone is bricked at that point. Um. Then Necrotic Wake, we have a tremendous set of nerfs to trash, along with a big quality of life increase, which is that the weapons persist through death. That is very welcome. I I, I love the change, and any time there's a change towards making wipes less punishing, I'm usually a fan of it. I My yep. firm belief is almost always that wipes are punishing enough already, um, and you don't need to kick the team when they're down. Um, that's why, that's why my, my belief is like the, there should be checkpoints after every boss. Uh, as well um and this i think the, the, it, it feels really bad to like you know have something go a little bit have something go wrong and then not even be able to recover from it because you lost your javelin uh, and so the the next pull is now impossible as well um so this yeah, is a great change but they, they did target cap the javelin and the anima which will affect that snap that was in tells clip of the week and in the mdi uh for sure that it doesn't it, affect it a lot though yeah I think they buffed the javelin damage though, because I I threw it on Monday night as they like right after they hot fixed it, and it did like uh -huh. double the amount of damage as it did before on my wind walker. So or like maybe more than double, I think, because it, it not only crit, but it also was more than like a crit would have previously done. I don't know. It feels like it was at least. Interesting. Hmm. Maybe maybe Mark of the Master Assassin Rogue is even more valuable now. Or were hmm. you playing the um the Tiger Palm <laughs> Legendary? <laughs> no. Somebody was speculating about this, I think, in About um, the Tiger Palm Legendary that makes it so you have, like, 50% crit after you Tiger Palm against the target. And so you'd, like, Tiger yeah. Palm them and then... Uh, the bomb uh, would be a nice. something. So, I, okay. How, how... Do you think that this changes, like, which mobs you're going to use the armaments on? Because I think right now people are using their spear on Blightbone just because it's kind of there. And the odds of you being able to keep it across the whole entire dungeon seems fairly low. Whereas now, like, you're really able to set up that spear at a more appropriate time. And you can even javelin, like, the final boss, which a, not many groups have elected to do. But I actually think that javelin the final boss, especially whenever you have, like, all of your players down at the very beginning, is kind of important to be able to push the boss faster so you're not getting more shields. And, like, that boss takes more time the longer it goes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I could see that. I think that'd be good. I, I, I'm going to keep that javelin. I'm going to use it when I get sent down on that boss so that I can immediately, <laughs> you know, kill the, the mob at the end and then come back up and flame You're the other dying. players for not killing their, uh, their, their angels faster. You can use the, you can use the bap stick on it too, the hammer. Bonk. Um, Bonk. Also that, so in addition to the weapons changes, there's nerfs to, I would say most of the trash in the dungeon. Uh, most of the yeah, trash but... in the dungeon have some serious nerfs going on here. We've got like 20% damage or health on most mobs in this place, it looks like. Um, okay, so... question. So there's, uh, they nerfed the two mini-bosses, um, the Skeletal Monstrosity and the... Narazuda. I don't know how to pronounce Yeah, Narazuda. Do you think that oh, yeah. there is a world where you play Narazuda pack now since the since the animal orb is target capped... Um, and, 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 like, that is a pretty good candidate to Animal Orb now with that thing having 20% less HP. Do you think it's worth? I mean, I'm not, I'm not convinced, but maybe. Maybe. The Animal Orb does make that pull a lot easier. And as long as he dies before he does all the party damage he does, then it would be a uh -huh. really good count. So, yeah. There's, that, that pull has, like, two of the Necrotic Bolt guys, right? Yeah, you basically have a lot, like, so a balance need, druid. You need the Animal Orb to, like, silence Or the them. Orb, yeah. Uh, or yeah, yeah, exa exactly. You need the Orb. 
uh, the orb got nerfed for like the other pulls that people were doing with That's it. True. Like people people were using that orb on like uh, like a bunch of the casters plus uh, the fear dudes, and it was like. That's not exactly the most reasonable thing to do it now on. Uh, I, I actually think using on Arizuda may be I mean, the meta play. It still silences above eight targets, and it still does good. Like, even if you're fighting 13 targets or something, it's still doing like more than half of the damage <laughs> it used to. So Does it, does it silence every eight targets? Do we know? Uh, yeah, because it's just doing distributed so, evenly yeah. across all targets damage. I'm pretty sure it silences everything. It, yeah, I mean, good. it seems like it would. I don't know why it wouldn't. It, but... it's, not, it's not the usual cap that they did with like you know, Blade Dance, where it hits five targets only. Uh, it's, you know, it hits all targets. It's just doing d damage evenly distributed. By the way, if every single thing that was target capped this expansion was done with this number eight and with this damage distributed evenly across all targets thing, I wouldn't have had a problem with target cap for the record. I Correct. Uh, yeah, that is here. right. That would be so much nicer for, like, every single class. Yeah, it's just the, the, like, the five instead of eight is actually so rough for a lot of specs, and the fact that it's, like... <laughs> on bolstering week you really feel it where you're like why did these five guys die first dude oh. you, know, you know it's a meme like wind walker and hunter are actually insane and then you hit like 10 targets and you and there was like a noticeable difference in how much damage they're doing versus like whenever you're hitting five targets you're like damn this class is op and you hit 10 targets you're like damn this class kind of sucks yeah um <laughs> So yeah, and they're not even help, not, which causes problems. It's not problems. bad, but, but well, yeah. it, then it, that's why you don't see the other cap specs though, because the other cap specs are like on five targets, you're like, oh, this class is fine, and then on ten, you're like, it's gone, right? It's not on the meters. So unless they're like, uh, unless the cap specs are OP on five targets, like Windwalker and MM, yes, they are just unplayable because there are those big pulls, um, and it's tough. You're not you're not going to stop doing big pulls like DOS. You're actually just going to pull every single bird. Elderhorn, invisible mob in that instance, and and like right again, pulls. you don't have to, but like the high keys are going to do it, right? Like if you if you're trying to compete with the team that's doing that, they're going to do higher keys than you. I mean, you're yeah, going to have well, to compete versus pull. the fire mage yeah. that's in your own party too, and it's just going to make you feel like right. shit, right? Yeah. I mean, just look at the MDI polls where they're still pulling the exact same number of mobs in each poll, basically as previous expansions with target cap in place, because they just have to use like the specs that can deal with it the best, and there's only like two or three that can deal with it well, but. They're going to keep doing it until it's literally not possible. Right. So, I mean, may maybe, you know, the fact that Mage slipped under the radar with their the target. Mage got capped on their Ignite spreading, but then the expansion came out and Ignite spreading is no longer their best way to do AoE anyways. It's Flame Strike and Flame Strike is uncapped. Yeah. Um, what so, a meme. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's so, keep talking about the, the nerfs here because we also have in Necrotic Wake nerfs to three of the four bosses. Uh, mostly to Amarth, Blightbone and Stitch Flesh got kind of minor quality of life ones. The worms need to bite you five times instead of three before they explode. The void zones last one minute instead of six minutes on Stitch Flesh. Uh, and then really just the same kind of trash nerfs were applied to all of the adds that were spawned by Amarth and the adds spawned closer to him. Um, uh, the, there's a 20% nerf to the add on Stitch Flesh as well. Uh, that that's not sh like interesting. They they what uh, one of the loyal loyal Stitch Work dudes, ah, whatever, okay. right, right creation. above that. I don't this know. Is... Yeah, the loyal creation. It wasn't it wasn't added like with the thing, but yeah, interesting. So yeah, 25 24 percent. That's a lot of health reduced on that thing. Yeah, that is. What do you guys think about all these necrotic? wake changes as opposed to like what if they did this for another dungeon do you think they picked the wrong dungeon like i feel like this was already one of the easier keys for people to time at a high level but maybe it's not for the like weekly 15 population yeah i i felt like this was a key that was disproportionately tough as your group got less coordinated um so like we were saying like it was already pre-nerf one of the best keys like it was the world world first 24 was done um yeah and that was because that's because when you <laughs> when you're coordinated, you could do all this all this stuff really effectively. But uh, I do think this is a good set of nerfs for like weekly gamers. You know, I'm not sure if they needed to slap down 20 percent HP across like every single mob in the instance. I mean, there there are some there are some mobs that needed to be hit. Like I thought the the necromancer mobs that got slapped down a little bit, uh, like the as of the necromancer spawns rather, not even the necromancer himself. That, that felt pretty pretty reasonable uh it's the just... mini bosses that that got hit a little bit i feel like the stitch works needed to like change how their tenderized work not exactly like health nerfs yeah that'd be nice 
it, it just this is emblematic of me of like the balancing problem of a dungeon like Necrotic Wake. We saw this last expansion with Toldegor as well. Toldegor yeah. was one of the best keys season one, and then going into season two, they were like, okay three more minutes on the timer for this dungeon <laughs> right that's exactly and, and that, that's because it was it, and like necrotic wake it's a great key for the push groups but for the less coordinated groups unlike normally where you know as the key goes up the dungeon gets eight percent more health and damage and so like the lower level groups and the higher level groups are just kind of on this linear scale with dungeons like necrotic wake and with told gore and with plague fall as well uh, in this expansion the more coordinated your group gets you actually are just blasting the key at a high Dude. level because you have the the weapons that uh, scale with keystone level and and you know don't increase in difficulty as the key goes up for those groups i mean plague fall no meme is an easier dungeon to do on 24 than necrotic wake was last week like it, that dungeon is so free if you play the plague boar as well right which yeah, it's very, very reminiscent of those told to gore siege of Rale, spotter strategy it's um i mean did, we talked about this for how long whenever it was in beta it was like what are you doing with these plague boards in this dungeon what are you doing with these curian like items in this dungeon it's just like obviously this is going to be a problem but i mean it's, whatever. it's, it's not necessarily a, uh, a problem, they, problem. I, I think they fixed necrotic wake though i mean I, I uh, yeah think i like, think you just yeah. you got to balance around the weekly gamers and it is unfortunate that it creates this um this dichotomy. this thing where now these keys are like going to be the easiest ones at the high level uh but I don't know, end of the day, that's a pretty small population that are playing up there, and I, I do think that it is a shame whenever there's, like, you you're doing a 22 key, and there's, like, you could roll it into one of these very doable 23s, or into one of these 23s that, like, you're gonna have to drop to 21's time, right? Um, but I don't think this expansion is that offensive. Like, I don't think there's as much of a King's Rest this expansion as there was last expansion for your key to turn right. into. Why do you think DOS got no changes? Yeah, I'm surprised to see no nerfs to the other side. Yeah, that's um, what I was kind of thinking. I I would have expected more of like this this across the board nerf type of strategy I, on the other side instead of necrotic. Really, break. I feel like I feel like just a couple of the bosses in DOS need, like are the major offenders Hakar, in my mind. Like dude. Hakar and that chain lightning from Deal Dealer's Ironic is just those two those two <laughs> things are just not all right. Hakar is one of those bosses that either you kill that boss in like forty five seconds or you get like three extra uh, bl blood barrages and like the shield and you're like what, what the hell um, and. and Part of the problem, too, is that like once the boss reaches sub 20% and you have like five ads out, the timer for the next blood barrage starts like it, it's like a constant timer, right? And so once you get the, the shield off, the timer has the timer began before like the shield even came off. So he's about to cast blood barrage again. And you're like, oh, God, we're, we're missing the timer here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that kind of that kind of boss shield mechanic. It, start, is... it starts on cast and not the end of the shield. Yeah, the thing is like... as well, it's it's not like Mana Storms and and Mozilla are hard bosses or easy bosses either, right? Like those ones, it's it's a dungeon that's already got tough bosses you would normally want to lust, uh, but you can't Did you say like... Mozilla. Yeah. yeah, yeah, brother to Vuvuzuela. Vuvuzuela. <laughs> Mozilla Firefox. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sister to Mozzarella. <laughs> <laughs> um, that there, there's it's just a, a dungeon that's really. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's got to just be the opposite of these necrotic wakes, right? Where it's like, it's got to be this dungeon where at the low key levels, it's actually pretty good. I imagine that is the case for it, right? Because like, I don't think you notice the arcane lightning on, on Zyronic on the low key level, right? Like, that is true. And you, you, the Hakar dies before yeah, you true. have like seven adds. You know, on M-Zero week, I remember thinking, oh, this is, you know, this is a free boss. Uh, there's no oh, this boss has one mechanic. No mechanics. Yeah. <laughs> and, then you, and then you do a guild group the next week and you're like, wait. What's killing everyone? Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe down the line. I, I feel like the way to adjust this, if they insist on having these some of these dungeons that have, like, the weapons carrying you that scale with key level, is to, like, adjust the coefficient. So, like, make it so that Necrotic Wake gains more health and damage per yeah. key level than the other side does. I got a bone. I got a bone to pick with Blizzard Entertainment. You remember how they changed Tyrannical going into this expansion to not work with uh add spawns off of bosses why does droman from ingram Alloc and uh why the hell do the ads from mozzarella or mozilla or whatever the hell you want to call that boss why did those scale with tyrannical but the rest of like the ads summoned by bosses not like i thought that this was the yeah. in ah. apparently they've been re-adding re ads in to scale with tyrannical as the expansion has been going on according to squishy like they all started with no modifier on them on tyrannical and they've been like re-adding them back to how it used to be in bfa uh, 
I can't wait until we get that spreadsheet again. Do you guys remember that spreadsheet of like, here are the possibilities that scale with Fortify. <laughs> here are the ones that don't scale with either Affix, and here are the ones that scale with Tyrannical. Yeah. I'm, uh, so bad. I'm so I, not... I thought it was a good change. I didn't think it was enough, but I thought it was a move in a good direction when they were like, okay, look, just the boss, just the one primary target boss will be the one that scales with Tyrannical and like everything else will not. And I was like, okay, I mean, it, now, now it's like, it makes sense in my head. I'll know what scales. I don't need a spreadsheet. And like they're nerfing a hard affix, uh, but reversing that is definitely unforge. One does not simply understand the thought process of Blizzard sometimes. Uh, it's just an enigma and we must accept their teachings. Uh, I mean, it's just so bad for some bosses like Hakkar and like Nalthor, the Rhinebinder from like uh, that's the last boss. The ones boss that shield Nicaragua. themselves, yeah. So, the ones that shield themselves are actually just so toxic. Zap and Theater of Pain, where it's just like, okay, I'm going to summon a banner. The banner, uh, yeah. 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 Those mechanics drive people nuts. It's so, it's, disproportionately it's, it's like terrible. compounding. The, it compounds yeah. the tyrannical, where like in, a boss that has 30% more health instead of taking 30% more time. Already is taking longer because you have less cooldowns, right? There's you're, you're spending a smaller percentage of the boss fight in your cooldowns, but you're also now taking even more and more time because you're getting more of these extra ad spawns or barrier phases or whatever. Um, so yeah, it it, se it seems like it's actually becoming even more of like a common man issue too, where it's just like yeah. even more, even like further down the line, people are just like fucked, right? I can't the get 15, that shit out that's of the thing, right? Last expansion, weekly 15s, you didn't feel tyrannical. I preferred tyrannical in a weekly 15 last expansion. This expansion, I, I think even in the weekly 15, you're, you're, you do these bosses, you're like, ah. Yeah, the weekly 15 crowd, I was like, what the fuck yeah. is this a fix, man? <laughs> All right, we do, in, in addition to dungeon changes, have some raid changes as well. Castle Nathria. Council of Blood, uh, nerfed for small raid sizes and uh, normal and heroic stuff. Okay. All right, I'll take Sludge it. Sludge Fist. Bad. It's fine. The Roar Damage, 10% on Mythic. Chain Slam, 35% uh, on Mythic. And Chain Bleed, 35% on Mythic. 35%. Big yeah, 35%. Your move changes. That's a lot of that's a lot of nerf. Uh, do I take damage on that fight anymore? <laughs> so like the funny thing is that uh, that chain slam is mitigated by armor, mm -hmm. and if the you is are not, but the slam is yeah yeah the bleed is not but the slam is, and if you're a clothy then you get absolutely rolled the like boar notably too. priests. <laughs> the boar is also uh, is fizz. All damage on this fight is fizz. Um, yeah exactly. I, I, I believe the roar yeah. is mitigated by armor, although some physical AOE effects aren't. But I think the roar is the, the roar is yeah. the, the roar definitely. I don't take I don't take damage on that fight, but it's like uh they're clothies and it's like the mages the mages obviously have shield but like if they don't have shield up notably the priests get absolutely smoked on that boss and if they ever had to be in like the chain slam group they're like oh yes i'm pressing dispersion i'm not gonna die here and it's just like it's so unreasonable for anybody like and it's just like oh they nerfed it by 35 percent, and now your moon can actually take zero damage from it and your clothies are able to deal with it i love that so given that they've chosen to nerf Sludge Fist, which I don't have too strong of an opinion on, uh, I'm fine with it. I love that this is the way that they're nerfing the boss rather than doing like health-based nerfs. I think that this is a boss that it's great to maintain that DPS check uh, on. So I think so too, yeah. Yeah. I think this is a, this is a great a great change um, given that they want to change the boss, which again, <laughs> uh, I'm not a priest, so I don't, I don't care. I, I, I'm, I'm playing Vengeance Demon Hunter on this fight, which on Heroic, this fight, you know, it slapped our tanks around at item level 180. On Mythic as a Vengeance Demon Hunter... I can live this fight for like two minutes after the other tank dies and, and just take double damage and it's totally fine. The spec is so, so broken. So cool. Yes, tank balance is so good. Yes. Stone Legion Generals, uh, we have a have you tremendous pulled that boss yet? set of changes. Tremendous set of changes to Stone Legion Generals. I haven't pulled it yet, no. We, we just did 8 of 10 on, on Tuesday. We're coming back tomorrow and we'll do Stone Legion Sire. But uh, from reading this, from watching other guilds do it a little bit, this set of changes is by far almost exactly what the fight needed so they all, goliath they almost like a... <laughs> goliath cooldown on ravenous feast reduction skirmisher slight health reduction pretty pretty negligible you can't outrange the swipe the tear or the fist anymore their damage has been reduced a little bit to comp uh, to compensate heart rend you can't outrage during the intermission anymore no longer applies heart hemorrhage to the player who dispelled the effect okay so that that's a lot less punishing and you don't do the mass spell sacrifice strat anymore spell cooldowns now reset with phase changes this is this is the this is the one. This is the change that uh, is yeah. is the best one in this list. It is so good. This fight was so unbelievably bad uh, 
prior to this change being implemented. It was the single worst fight I've ever done. And now I'm pretty confident that it's like, it's fine. It's a, it's, it's a fine Dude, okay. to progress on. Y you remember the meme whenever we were uh, skipping Shadow of Zul and then they nerfed it? Okay, so actually some of these changes, you're going to have some issues reprogressing this fight. The heart hemorrhage one and the uh, and the one with the tank damage. And there was like the meme about the Shadow of Zul, like, oh, they they nerfed his health by 6%, but then don't allow us to skip it anymore. So they buffed his health by 94% or whatever. 94%, that's, yeah. that, that's the tank damage shit, dude. Your tanks actually get the fucking sauce now on this. On this right, because now you actually have to tank swap the stone fist instead of yeah. just leaping yeah, everyone. It's, it, de during the intermission and like your healers are having to heal the heart rend during the intermission, you're like, holy shit, we're dying. Yeah, okay. So right. so there may there may be some added difficulty here, but the chain, like the way that this fight was done and before was so dumb. You were like waiting for specific yes. times to push every phase. You were hoping you were going to get good spell queuing. Uh, and if you got bad spell queuing in, in P1 intermission, it was bad the rest of the fight. Um, and now okay, you know, so timers resetting is really welcome. And you also like, you needed to leap every single stone fist during the second intermission, because if you failed to do that, then the spell queuing would be potentially broken in the last phase. And you would just get an upheaval linking with the last blast and you couldn't, you, you would die every single time that happened. Um, you, know, it's so the you know, it's a funny meme. Phase two, uh, phase two intermission and phase three are all like virtually identical to the timings that you wanted and the timings that a lot of guilds did. Phase one is the only thing, like phase one and phase one intermission are the only things that's like actually changed. Right, and and the tank stuff in the later phases. So. The tanks, the tank stuff is yeah, obviously a little bit different. So they're taking a but long. You, you basically but... had to like time all of your pushes to make the cooldowns effectively reset with phase changes. Because you just you, you had to wait until the the perfect time well, to push. So you need the crystallize the timers. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you had to have the crystallize at a very specific point. Uh -huh. Um, and like there's obviously some other shit with like wicked blades and trying to dunk orbs and like there's a bunch of random carb. I, th that's a good change. It's a good change for the fight. The fight should have been like that from the beginning. This yeah, this is it is one of those sets of changes where like they this has been messaged I think even since beta, but especially even since since week one mythic you know, it's been pretty clear that, like, this change needed to happen. So it's nice to see it here. Every guild that hasn't yet pulled this boss is going to have a much better life than those that have already killed it. The guilds that killed it pre-nerf, you know, we've, we kind of got this, uh... Do you remember pre-nerf Stone Legion Generals when we had to do that thing? Uh, but I'm I'm really happy to see this. I'm really happy to see this set of changes. If they hadn't changed this boss, we were just not going to kill it ever again. That was, um... That was gonna be our life. Is Discord getting all laggy? Am I laggy? Yeah, it's pretty laggy. Oh no. Ah, uh, it's laggy for me too. I didn't know. Hold on. I can, I can change where we're doing it. But... All right. It sounds like Tettles is going to change our Discord server. Oh my goodness, it worked. Ah, Premier Pogger. Audio Fidelity coming in from Discord. Pog. Poggers. Do you know that uh, Limit switched back to TeamSpeak like this tier? And uh, I kind of think that might be the play. Discord is like, it's good, but if you're rating like even like 16 hours a week, there's a good chance you're going to have weird audio at one of those hours every week. Yep. Oh, yeah, it's nice that it comes to the forum though. Discord having the like being half forum, half half voice is just. So I mean, that's the big the deal. Place. Is the yeah. forum right? Yeah, definitely. All right, so that's uh that's dungeon and raid changes. Let's do this topic that we got sent from Discord, which is uh. So here's the premise: you are given control of WoW development, and you get to make one change to each of the following things. Um, there are four different ones. Let's just we'll go through these one at a time. Uh, we can start with Tettles. So, Tettles, what would you change about M plus affixes other than delete tyrannical? You're not allowed to say delete tyrannical. Uh, okay, so what would I change about mythic plus affixes? I, I think that I would try to... It's one change. <laughs> First you off... You have to make one change. So this is not a manifesto. This is your top priority change. You, you have a one one thing to implement. I would, make I would make necrotic not stack the way it currently does. Okay. I think that's a that's a very fair way to do it. Yeah, we've talked about this before. Uh, my suggestion for it was to make it like uh, like a twenty second debuff that stacks but doesn't increase in time when it gets applied. Right. So you just naturally reset every twenty seconds. Um, but I think that there there are a lot of ways to make necrotic more feasible, more manageable as well. Uh, Trial, what would your Agreed. one change to M plus affixes be? Um, well, I think I could say this. It's not just really tyrannical, but I would remove both fortified and tyrannical okay. and just have like, we you just cut off that entire affix row and just have the other affixes on the same rotation or whatever, but it, it would make dungeon balance per week a lot better. 
and there wouldn't be just completely dead weeks. I don't think. Yeah, I think that's fair. Somebody in uh, in my Discord actually posted like a like a tyrannical replacement idea where there's like seasonal tyrannical. So like this this time around, it's like Sire Denathrius themed, and you like it was just during boss fights you would get massacre casts the same way that they happened in Sire. Um, <laughs> what an awful, what an awful uh, face. That'd be really Dude, yeah, funny though. Fun. Massacre owns. Massacre is so fun to do. What, uh, what boss? I mean, there are bosses that's just like not doable. It's cool. hard coded to like not happen during certain events. Yeah, like oh yeah, massacre it's... during the uh, stun on second boss of halls. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Uh, I, I thought it was a cool a cool idea though, like making adding seasonality to tyrannical themed on the the raid boss, like just some, some the raid boss like sire shows up and like casts a bit of sire ability during uh during the that boss would be fight that would be far more interesting though I will admit oh random blood price would you would you add there? <laughs> blood price no <laughs> what was your question Tettles? Uh I was, I was just saying would any of you guys like add an effix or. Like add something as opposed to starting to remove something. My my change would be a adjustment as well. I would change bolstering. I would make a okay. bolstering have a duration uh, and fall off after, like again twenty seconds or something. I, dude, I was about to say just make this this a fixed set not exist. If, yeah. if, I, if I was gonna say anything, bolstering and necrotic together. Split together up bolstering and necrotic but... for sure, and and tyrannical. Any week should be one of those three affixes at most. All three at the same time is uh is so brutal. Um. But like, w would you add any affixes? Like, is there is there something that like is on your mind that you would think be like, damn, that would be sick to add? This would not be sick to add, but here's a good affix. As DPS players, every time you hit a mob, you gain a one percent damage reduction uh, that lasts for eight seconds until you stop damaging completely for the duration of the debuff. Imagine if that was an affix for a tank. Oh wait, it is. It's called necrotic. Oh well, your damage okay, doesn't matter. Right. I, I see. So <laughs> You're, you're trying to make help DPS players understand how bad necrotic feels. Um, yeah. I see. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, that does sound awful. I'll, uh, I'll give you that. All right, next category. Dungeon tuning. Tettles, what, what is your one change you make to dungeon tuning? I would say this, this can be like one dungeon. Uh, a, a, a couple of... One dungeon? Yeah. I mean, it, to me, it would be like I would, I would actually Or dungeon change... tuning as a whole. Like you could change... You could change I, I, would, ch I would change like... Works. How much white swings hit for as a whole on tanks? I, I I feel like the kite meta that we have right now is pretty fucking bad. Ooh, big agree on that. I mean, it, it okay, like it's not it's not that the kite meta inherently is terrible. Like your tanks are gonna have to kite eventually, but the fact that your tanks have to <laughs> Elysian decree and then immediately fucking run is just like all right. Mm. Elysian decree and bail is not it. Yeah, I think that's a good one. Uh, Trial, how about you? Do you have a, a different one, or, or do you want to to agree? Dungeon tuning, yeah, I definitely agree on that. The, I I think that every single white swing of mobs should be reduced by like thirty percent, and they should nerf vengeance so that other tanks can be brought to keys and actually be viable. But with both of those things together, I think uh, tanks would be more balanced and able to do I, high keys. I don't know that vengeance needs to be nerfed. I think I mean bear is like a, equivalent to vengeance right now in terms of survivability. They just don't have a leasing decree on on demand threat. I, I do think that there there needs to be some balancing to the tanks. Like if you look at the. Uh... If you look at the Tuttles, you don't think, front page, you don't man. think vengeance should be nerfed? Yeah, like look at the front page. I think that other, I think that other tanks should be more buffed than vengeance needs to be nerfed. I mean, the, the issue with vengeance is that vengeance is like only. I right, maybe vengeance is fucking that good, but yeah, yeah but, go ahead and keep scrolling, right? No, so let's, oh, it's, look, it's another number color. forty that where you find a non the the top thirty nine runs are vengeance demon hunters. Uh, okay, uh, so, but but like for for what it's worth, I, my point is that like brewmaster and ninety seven of the top hundy. <laughs> our uh our vengeance all right, runs all right. man. but but yeah, isn't is that fine. indicative of like okay so guardian doesn't have the same threat as vengeance and brewmaster doesn't have the survivability of vengeance but if you like if you if you ticked both of those up just a hair it, those yeah, two would it's other tanks I would other tanks do have similar qualities in some aspects of tanking but vengeance has the whole package so yes something needs i don't to i don't know right. if i would i don't i don't know if i would nerf vengeance as like like that though I, I think that I, the way I would nerf Vengeance is I, I would bring the other tanks up. But I, I could see, yeah, tuning Vengeance down a hair, but I do I do agree that like the way Vengeance feels to play is better than the way almost all other tanks feel to play, right? And I think that like rather than yeah. make Vengeance worse against the dungeons, I think you do want to make the other tanks better against the dungeons. Um, well, yeah, I mean, especially it's... since you have like, you have fucking Prot Paladin that gets actually just mowed down on a 15 man yeah they should that actually, actually the just back murdered. into the game or something that that was pretty good you remember when you used to press shield of the righteous and get more tanky rather than get like 20 armor <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, it's so sad. That's cool. Um, I mean, obviously, everyone wants five tanks to be buffed rather than nerfing one, but the right. way Blizzard does things is they always choose the easiest option, so they're going to nerf the one tank. Uh, so yeah, I, I agree with you that like the the knee jerk response when somebody says oh nerf this back, everybody's like oh just buff everything else. But in this case, I actually do think that like tank should be buffed and vengeance should be nerfed. Uh, maybe as a, a way of you think it. you think both needs to happen. I mean maybe. Yeah. I, I, I think I think Elysian decree is probably a little bit too. If I had to nerf sure. vengeance, I'd probably nerf Elysian decree. I think that's the one that I would probably hit over anything else. But like no, I'll just go Venthyr, man. Venthyr. I, I mean, dude, number Venthyr. number one number one Rio <laughs> tank is uh, Venthyr. Is it? Uh, one one Zavade, yeah. Oh, is Zavade number one Rio still? Yep. Because the other guy just got he, the he twenty four. Uh, maybe maybe not if the guy got the twenty four, but he, Evade was. Let's see. Like, no, not 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 but there's not actually not bad on Vengeance, but I think Evade does want to be carrying. He's just playing Pentir for now for raid. Is he okay? Interesting. Um, I actually I think Pentir is sweet for for. Vengeance I think it's too. actually really good too. It slows down everything when you're in meta by a lot around you because mm -hmm. you're more tankiness. Um, all right, my change for dungeon tuning. Yeah, I, I think I think I would I would agree with I, I would do buff tanks and maybe nerf buff tanks nerf vengeance. Um, is what I would. Do I don't. I, yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't know if I would necessarily even need to like hit something or like hit a dungeon. I, I think that like the the biggest issue I do see is the kite. I, kite I, if, if I had to do a dungeon rough. specific thing, I'd do like a like nerf a car boss, boss. nerf yeah. a car add time to dos something like that. Yeah, I think our I think that's raid pretty, tuning. Pretty raid tuning is our next category. Tattles, do you have a raid tuning uh, suggestion? Uh, they just slammed down Stone Legion Generals changes. Would I hit anything else? Um, I don't think anything else. I, mean, I don't think anything else really needs to be hit. Like, I, I feel like the rest of the instance is pretty good. Drop I, I do feel like the instance. feel like the instance is pretty solid. Yeah, I would have said Stone Legion, especially. Before the nerfs yesterday, but I'm not sure now. Some of the more annoying bosses are like Council of Blood on Mythic. Maybe something there, but I'm not maybe, sure. Exactly maybe what. maybe Council of Blood. If you don't do the like the the meta order, I would probably slap down maybe a little bit because like doing the yeah. correct order on Council of Blood is like a significant uh, uh, like time increase, and it's way easier to do. But for me, I would uh, delete raid buffs and <laughs> nerf, fair enough. Nerf AMZ. To five percent instead of twenty percent, those would be my. Oh, you're doing raid tuning like that. Percent. Like I it, like. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Raid. Those would be my my adjustments. Um, I like that. Yeah. Because I don't know, like the, right right now, it, it's difficult for me to the foresee are good. a tier where you play like any melee other than stacking DKs and then like one monk, maybe rock. for monk buff, one warrior maybe for warrior buff. Especially if those specs are good, otherwise you just play them in your tank rolls. Um, one havoc for havoc you, buff if havoc's good, and then you just fill your tanks up with whichever of those specs aren't good, and then you don't have any other melee in your raid. No, you would stack a rog if you needed an immunity. If you needed an immunity, yeah. But the, in in this tier, AMS functioned to immune all the same stuff that Cloak would have, which is why <laughs> yes. you uh, what yeah. part of the reason that you saw in Holy. It's possible for them to create a tier where AMS doesn't function as Cloak of Shadows on a shorter cooldown. Uh, they've done that in the past, but. Yeah, so you, you would play rogues for that, but AM, AMZ in the 20% state it's in right now is so, so, so good. It's like, I mean, Barrier was a huge reason reason that Priest was good in several tiers last expansion, and AM, AMZ is just Barrier, except it doesn't work on Sledge Fist. Um, so, yeah, I mean... Yeah, it's very powerful. I, even at 5%, it would still be really, really, really good. That, that thing would... Uh... Would you delete Devo Aura? You said you'd delete raid buffs. Would you delete, delete Devo Aura? Sure, yeah, and keep Aura Mastery for, for pallies or whatever. Um, okay. I, like I think all that all that stuff where you're like looking at your checklist and you're like, okay, we you know we need to add one warrior, one paladin, one monk, uh, one you know one warlock, one uh, one whatever, one mage, uh, one priest. All all of that. I feel like that checklist it gets to a point where rather than making specs see play that otherwise wouldn't, you're now in this spot where you're like, hello. I'm a feral druid. I would like a spot in this raid. Oh, there are two flex spots on the list. I mean, and dude, I can't compete for them instead of there being like the 14 DPS <laughs> slots that you can compete dude, for. Dude, Boomy and Hunter no meme actually have that problem where it's like, what the fuck? We're competing against like War Warlock, which has almost I would say Gate is like almost mandatory utility. The first like, Warlock it, is is effectively a raid buff. Like health stones oh, are yeah. a raid buff. Um, health health stones and, and summoning people to fucking instance and shit this, like that. This race to world first. But, uh... <laughs> I mean, part of the utility was turned off for other guilds, yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I, I think it, it would go a long way towards making it so you could actually like get a raid spot because there are, in, in the yeah. in the in these top hundred guilds, there's actually so few of those like spots. Like when we're making our rosters, there are it's actually like eighteen things are required, and then there's like two slots where we're like, okay, who do we bring for these two slots? Oh, interesting. Um, and you know, it's it's a lot worse. Um, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, agreed. Last one here. Gearing systems. Tettles. Gearing systems, one change. Uh, I would bring back tier sets, tier bonuses. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's on the cards for later in this expansion. I think it'll be very interesting to see the implementation they choose for that. I would bring I would bring back tier bonuses in the way that they were in the past. I don't I don't know if so I don't like, know if I want some bad bullshit. But... Yeah, are you talking about like five items, four set bonus, drops from raid? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh I I yeah. I'm open to ideas where you can get them through M plus and PvP as well. I would I would be open to ideas of that as well. Yeah, I agree with um, that. I do think that implementation is important here with, with what they choose to do. Uh, there are a lot of ways that tier sets can go wrong. Uh, but I do I like the I liked the way that tier sets made my spec feel different in patch like seven point one versus seven point two. And I feel like that is something that has been lost in I also, since BFA. I love the I love the dichotomy of like actually like having a pretty big shakeup in terms of balancing between yeah. tiers two versus like who had the OP tier bonus versus who had the shit tier bonus because then you see shit like oh my god enhancement has a fifteen percent tier bonus this tier omg this thing it owns yeah I thought or that like was cool as well. uh, yeah, yeah yeah like in Taurus and Taurus enhancement shaman actually just piped because they had some tier bonus that was like a twelve percent gain I do think there was a lot wrong with Legion tiers like two piece four piece two piece two piece like legendary that was slot overlap all that stuff and this expansion. That was bad. You know, the, the, there's there's only the one legendary, right? And you choose which slot it's in. So I think they could go back to just five instead of six slots uh, with the four piece, and then you can't do two piece, four piece. Uh, I'm not sure. It's definitely an interesting challenge to solve. Yeah, that's like the only, that's the only problem I remember about that. Otherwise, I really like tier set bonuses. And what if they like added a currency that you could get the the tier set bonus from either Mythic Plus PvP or raid, and you could just slap it on whichever yeah, so if it was like a, gear that you already have from like whichever scroll. content. Of of tier set bonus, yeah. and you you buy you can get it that currency from anything, and you put it you enchant your gear with the tier bonus. That'd be cool. Yeah, That'd I would like cool. that. Uh, do you have a? Is that your your one change, or do you have a different suggestion, Charles? No, I have a completely different one. Okay. I would like to gear my characters in the content that I prefer. So I would create a replica of the PvP gearing system and just apply that to Mythic Plus. And honestly, I don't think Mythic Plus needs loot at the end of the dungeons if they have that system. So you can get your 35 anima, but you can also get Valor points or whatever currency they want to call it and go get your items eventually, one per week. I think, or I think that would accelerate gear too quick. Uh, if it's if it's implemented exactly like that, though, where it's yeah, like unique so systems. One problem with that is that the PvP, like the, the gearing of somebody who does all three is still going to be way faster than the gear, like, of somebody Infinitely who does faster. the M+. Plus. Um, yeah. I think that, so my, my perspective on gearing has always been that if you do all three forms of content, you should be more geared than somebody who just does one. But I do think there should I mean, be like I think that's going to be the case, right? Either like if way, you're a right? heavy M pluser or a heavy PVPer, I think you should be pretty comfortably geared. And if you're somebody who does both, you should be like 1.3 times as geared as somebody who does just one. <laughs> not um, not two X. Not two X, <laughs> right? So I I do think that there there has to be some creative solutions that accomplish that. I think though that for the M plus only player, a gearing system that looks like PVPs would be really welcome, where you like. Uh, maybe you still get items end of dungeon, but they're lower eye level, and then you can upgrade them with valor points, uh, or you know justice and valor points of some kind. Th those have been the the currency they've used for PVE in the past. And maybe so maybe you could like you get one eighty fours at your end of your M plus run, and you get a boatload of justice, and you can immediately use justice to upgrade one eighty fours up to like two hundred, and then you can use valor to upgrade M plus items from two hundred up to two twenty six based on the highest keys you've done. Um, where yep. like you know, all 11s lets you get up to 207, all 12s 213, etc., uh, all the way up. Something like that, I think, would be. It would be. There's a lot of really good stuff about the PvP loot system that I think. Um, I think PvP only gamers, you know, they have some problems as well. I do think that their particularly early patch, they had problems with like those weak slots of their gear were really weak. Well, now that's fixed though, as the dude, downrated PvP uh, the, level has the, gone up. The issue with PvP too is that you're competing against another player, and if yeah. the other player is also doing all three forms of content, and they show up in your fucking arena, and they yeah. have 25 item levels on you, and it doesn't matter if you're a rank one player, they're just gonna fucking murder you. Yeah, I mean that's 
<laughs> that's how you and I got 2400 this season. That's uh, <laughs> that's the way. Um, I I do think that the PvP like they they've they've messed around. So I'm not a PvP expert, but I know that the last couple expansions they've messed around with like templating, PvP scaling. And those came with their own set of problems. Those were designed to fix that issue, right? Those were designed Leech to make it so that like a 25 item level advantage was an advantage, but not insurmountable. Making it go back to just gear being gear in PvP, it has other advantages. It makes a lot of things more intuitive. It does mean that, you know, you're going to lose somebody who's more geared than you almost every time. Stat, temp stat templating, I would argue, is bad for the game. Yeah, I, I thought that was... Uh, well, that Le was Legion had... Well. Legion had stat Legion had stat templating, which was like obviously it's beneficial for PvPers, but I would literally argue that it's just not good for the the future of the game. Which is like yeah, you just loaded into like the outlaw rogue set, and like all your trinkets were turned off or whatever, and it was just yep. like it was scaled up based on how much item level you had, and you had the same amount of crit and mastery as every other outlaw rogue, just on it just slightly more if you had more item level, but very little. Like it was ten percent as impactful as item level was in PVE, um, and that. It led to it led to gear not not mattering at all for uh, for PVE but or for PVP which was you know in and out PVP, that, I don't know man you know, PVP is right? so unlucky like I, it's impossible to like have it balanced I feel you can't, like for you PVP. can't have both you can't have both ways right you can't have uh, you can't have the gear matter and also not lose when the other person is way more geared than you right like there's yeah there's not really a, an answer to that I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying, if you want to go try to gear up a, let's say, an alt vengeance demon hunter right now, and you're not good at PvP, you got to spend hours and hours of your time trying to get actual gear, and you have to be night fey to PvP at a, at a reasonable level, which you don't want to be night fey for PvE as a demon hunter. So you gotta you gotta pick your poison, and it's like night and day on either side of the of the fence. Yeah. For, yeah. for me, that's enough to where I just don't even want to play at all. Like. I would rather just not play. I do like the way the the way that PvP gearing the conquest cap being so high now. Like if you make an alt and you spend a week in RBGs or whatever, and you you cap conquest, you get to eighteen hundred, or a week in threes, you cap conquest, you get to eighteen hundred. You can actually buy like seven items now or eight items in eight slots of your choosing and upgrade them. Um, you need a lot of honor to upgrade all those items actually, so you, you'd have to do a lot of you could, but you could do that's the a honor lot of PvP. And, you could do the honor grind and like you know, watching Netflix while doing random battlegrounds or whatever. Um, yeah, but at least it's grindable. At least it's yeah. possible. But it, so what I'm saying is that, like, I love that PvP gearing in month three is faster than it was in week one. And that is not really true of M plus or raid gearing, right? M plus and raid gearing, you're, you're, there's no sort of expanding cap that you can catch all the way up to as fast as you want. Uh, and I think that would be another cool thing to look into adding to those systems. Um, for PvP gearing, I would improve it as well. I would I would make it so that at the start of next patch, you can actually get good gear from PvPing, like in your off slots uh, from like end of match rewards or something. Um, not like high item level, but like you know one ninety seven, uh, like one eighty four. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, I mean, they could get one ninety seven from upgrading. Uh... They can now from honor, but like start a patch, you couldn't upgrade past it, it, even one eighty four. wasn't possible until like week five. Uh, from... Oh. Yeah, it was like what one seventy. Yeah. Okay. Something. Yeah. Never mind. So I I, I would so add, add back uh, add, add back, back the, like end of match stuff. rewards at the the you know mythic plus end of dungeon ish tier uh, rewards. I because th I think that that was a, a that's a that was a nice thing about M plus gearing was that you could spam your way up to like you know normal heroic raid gear pretty quick. But I mean the they have conquest vendor on top of the vault too, which is like kind right, of right, right, right. The conquest vendor, like yeah. I'm saying, PvP gearing is really good. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. If you just took all the advantages of PvP gearing and you gave it to M plus and raid, then all of a sudden PvP gearing would be the worst, right? So I think that those few advantages that M plus and raid gearing do have, if you do want to export over the PvP gearing advantages to those systems, should probably find a way of getting over to PvP as well. And again, you should be better geared if you do all three, but it should you shouldn't be three times better geared, I don't think. Um, because I think that that is just too much. Okay, that was a cool topic. Uh, I don't know who sent that question in. I don't know if Tettles wrote it down anywhere. Oh, but, uh, um, I'm Andy from the Discord. Okay, that was a great great question. Thanks for sending it in. Um, if anybody else has, you know, anytime we're over these next couple months, we are going to be a little bit light on topics as we enter this sort of content valley between patches. So uh, we'll do a lot of topics from, from the Discord if there are good ones there. So uh, do hop in, join there, and submit those. This is also the part of the podcast where we get to support or to thank our supporters over at patreon.com slash titanforge who make the show possible. Um, they are Paul of US Proudmore, Soulbinds are just an underdeveloped dating simulator, Riley Wholesome Adjacent, 
Uh, oh man, I can't believe Tettles actually said that during the MBI. Gopher. True. Hi, I'm Mac, and I'm a balanced druid reroll because melee is cursed this tier. King of Skills, Zuko, Jaw, I wish I was drowned as Dino Pillow, Chromed, Trekkie, The Marsh Hare, Regulus, Never Nude, Chewy, Torgast, aka <laughs> Tower of Repetitive Generic Hurdles, Advocating Sadistic Tiredness. True. I haven't been a Torghast in a month, man. That's Sadistic funny. tiredness. That's so yeah. accurate. Tettles has been speedrunning Torghast, though. He's Dude, got his got a, sub six minute. A sub six minute. Uh, I was ranked Larry. one for approximately a few hours, and then somebody else took it. But we will be back in there <laughs> grinding down the time is later. Is it on speedrun.com? Yes, it is on speedrun.com. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Um, Pops and Pets, but best survival hunter, Zuljin. Sonara, Bread Ceratops, Necris, Revdil, Less Demon, More Hunter, uh, Nebuk, Sinmora, Eevee, Frosty K, New Meta, Stevenson, an unnamed benefactor, Take Light of the Protector and Frenzied Regen off the GCB, Wobonesy, No Verse, No Trick, I Scheduled a Tettles Flame, uh, Sire Dematicus, Call the Law Offices of the Sean Gill if you've ever been a victim of the Iron Fur Bug, Dimat, Sync B, Gamer Dad in Training, 44, Supra, uh, Lufer, I guess I'm a DH Bane at heart, Hanny is going to pump in Shadowlands. Nyx. Flick. Van Heelen is back, uh, but isn't sure what to do now. Gallic. Brucer. <laughs> Chewy. Dragnos Routes Abyss. It's Moezala, not Muzela. Weird champ. <laughs> Mozilla. <Tiberski. laughs> Mozilla. Mozzarella. Uh, M Sanity. E Space EU now recruiting. Please let my survival hunter have a raid spot. Rerolling Shaman to avoid having to get a Lust Pet. Pog Champ. Nice. Uh, Canyon and Moon Canyon and Moon Sonara of Emerald Dream Division 7 and Area 52 Scraw thanks everybody for the support much appreciated thank you to all the uh, all the patrons if your name isn't on this list by the way and it should be uh, it was an oversight Tettles is in charge of that so there's a lot of a lot of stuff goes wrong over there <laughs> um, yeah, that's just how it is so uh, do reach out to me or him or put it in the add us in the discord um, we'll, we'll sort it out uh, for you all right, Q&A time. Anastasia asks in Discord, uh, what are your thoughts on if gear overall is too sparse and what can be done about it? Is it really just a hangover from BFA loot pinata or is it feeling too slow still? I think we actually did a good job of talking about this in the main topic. Um, I think it's an interesting point, though, about the hangover from BFA loot pinata. Do either of you have a, a take on that? Um, I think that the issue isn't that loot is inherently slower. I think the issue is that some avenues of loot are extremely quick compared to other avenues. So the, some avenues are just like intrinsically feel worse. Um, I do also think that part of it is loot hanger though. I, I, I do actually think that that's part of it, but the, I, I think a bigger issue is that once you having people, once you have people start doing content that they really don't want to do, such as raiders, or such as PvPers raiding or raiders PvPing, then it's then you start to get into uh, yeah, difficult I mean, to, territory. Where to it's some like, extent, oh, like God. there are always there's always been high end raiders that always PvP, right? It's always been worth it, and you know raiders always find a way to sneak into or PvPers yeah. always find a way to sneak into raid. But like everybody in my guild PvPed this year. Last year it was like five people that liked to PvP that PvPed, and this year it was all of us. Um. And but all PvPers had to raid. Yes, and I, I I agree that shouldn't be like that. Go ahead, Joel. Yeah, we talked a lot about the PvP stuff, but I do think the raid loot is really, really scarce. Like, getting, getting a, a raid piece in general once per week is, like, a rare thing as an individual. Yeah, I mean, and, like, targeting a piece is impossible just about because there's no bonus rolls. You have to, like, either get really lucky in your vault or get really lucky and get one of, the, like, two pieces that drop from the boss. Yeah. I uh, I definitely definitely feel that. I think that like we just have this there's this feeling where it's like exciting, you right click the boss and you're like, what did I get? And like that used to, you used to be rewarded like fifty percent of the time on a boss kill with like a good feeling. And this expansion it's like thirty five anima, the overwhelming majority of the time you right click on a boss. And that's just yeah. I don't know. I I feel like a lot of it would be finding something that doesn't feel as bad as thirty five anima. Uh, to award for for a boss kill as well, maybe like a, a, a valor points, perhaps. Yeah, valor points. I think would would go a long way to that. I'd be like, ah, oh, yes, you know, collecting my valor points. Okay, cool. 
Um, or even oh. just more anima, man. Is 35... Do they really need to give us this little anima? Like, I get it. I get that there's <laughs> 35 no anima so little. But, like, you actually do want to have some anima, right? Like, you actually want to... I think they they were just worried about people being done with the grind early because it is a finite grind, right? It's a finite grind to build all your buildings and buy the cosmetics, but, like, it's a huge finite grind. If you're earning, like, 2,500 anima per week, that's not... You're going to be done in, like, seven years or something with buying all the cosmetics and, <laughs> and building your buildings and stuff. So, uh, heaven forbid you switch True. covenants as well. So, I think they could just give us 100 anima. I don't know, man. Um, 35 is just it's such a weird number that it's the same from like m plus and and right and it's just so low all right um next question comes from Lil bit in discord who asks what are your thoughts on pi this expansion mainly in raid i think dungeons is interesting too though uh so i think in dungeons it's um not exactly like always worth to bring like as, as long as pi is not in a state where disc is like mandatory because of pi i think for dungeons it's fine for raid, I think it causes a lot of animosity amongst raiders, which is the biggest issue I see. I, I, it's not that PI is like actually the most insane damage gain, but it, but between players and like who's getting PI, what classes are competitive because of not because of PI, but like with PI, and then like looking at raid parses is a meme, but people actually do care. Uh, I, I par parsing is a fucking joke, but like at the same time, having parses like completely skewed whether or not people get PI or not. It there, is also the the Kira, the guy who makes uh, who maintains Warcraft logs and makes it, I guess, um, is like gonna make a partition where it's just like the rankings are you can't get up there if you got PI. So it's just it's only it'll only list like non PI parses. That's not even cool either because like, yeah, there are some there are some classes and or specs and or people that are like intrinsically should be getting PI like in your right. raid like like. Uh, I don't know how the fuck you bring a mage to Sludge Fist without getting them PI. Like, they, they should be getting PI on Sludge Fist basically every single time they're in the raid, right? Um, sa same with, like, hunters on uh, Stone Legion generals should always be getting PI, uh, especially during the burns. And it's just like, all right, well. Yeah. I, I have a lot of issues with PI. I think it should just not go on other people. I think it should just be reserved for the priest. For one, uh, it makes MDI... The healing, comp the healing meta and MDI, it has to be a, dis a disciplined priest, like we talked about earlier. If they can heal, well, that's because of well. meld. Well, that's because of meld, right? But of, among the meld healers, meld. disciplined priest has the uh, the PI. I think even even without meld, you see a lot of priest because of PI on the mage. It would still be 100 percent mandatory priests without meld because it just gives more damage on a DPS player than than any other healer could possibly bring. I mean, holy paladin could actually contend for a little bit better, but those two would be the meta still because of PI. And in Raid, it like, imagine there's two Unholy DKs or two Hunters, and one Hunter or one Unholy DK always gets the PI. And you're the, you're the other person in that group that has to watch that every single time. Like, I just hate that. That's just I don't I don't personally care thing. about that. I, I just think that, like, that, that's not the issue with me. The issue is that the animosity that it brings between the people. Right, well, the animosity is caused because of how it feels to yeah. not be getting PI, right? Like, oh, yeah. That's want fair. somebody else to get, get it? I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> One of my DKs in chat says, ha ha, yeah, I wouldn't know about that. He did, yeah, he's not the PI recipient. The DK, right? He, he yeah. is not the PI recipient of the Unholy Death Knight branch. Exactly. <laughs> I, yeah. I play Windwalker, like, I don't get PI, but just seeing, like, how they have to be in that position, I would not feel good about that. I understand that, like, they wanted to bring it back, and it's unique, right? Like, if you just make it another cooldown for yourself, it is, you're removing some something interesting from the game, but I do think this one, it causes more problems than it solves, um... So yeah, <laughs> I I I agree. Get it out of here. It's uh, it it is one ability is causing way too much, way way too many, way too much, way too much trouble. I'm uh, I agree. All right. Well, speaking of causing way too much trouble, we will be back. Presumably, I think next week for same time. Is that the idea? Next uh, Wednesday. I I think that something uh, like that. Be, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. uh we'll aim for next week same time. Uh, because of course then the, this weekend there's no MDI. There's AWC instead. And then the weekend after, mm -hmm. it's MDI again. And then it's like BlizzCon Online, like two weekends after that or something. So uh, that'll be cool. I, ex I expect that we'll hear about 9-1 then. That should be cool. Um, but until then, we'll be, back, uh, we'll be back next week. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.